by dysentery or not. Okay, um, the leading cause of illness and death and disasters usually is not the initial disaster. Hundreds of thousands of people can die afterwards because of improper sanitation, inadequate and contaminated drinking supplies. So this is really important. Okay, our objective is to educate and to motivate in green. <laughs> From the teacher. Okay. With emphasis on the motivation part. Oh, is that it? And you notice that the TNT here, if that's what it takes to motivate you, we can accomplish that. Okay. Because when you have the motivation, then all the rest of it comes. If you don't have the motivation, it's just not going to happen. Okay. So that is really hard for me to look at. If you don't want to look up there, I understand. Um, so water is absolutely essential for survival. You can survive less than three days without water. And usually within about 24 hours after that, after the 24 hours, you just are feeling awful and you're not functioning really well. So it's really important. There's a lot of damage that can happen to your body. Um, and then drinking contaminated drinking water is almost better than, than not drinking any water at all. But waterborne illnesses result in some really painful, nasty diseases and death. So what we want to do is teach you how to make your water clean enough to drink. This is your part. Okay. I'm not sure why I'm up here. Because you are the entertaining one. I'm the engineer. I don't have a personality, so <laughs> you'll have to suffer through me. She's fun to listen to. Are you sweating right now? No. Oh, <laughs> um, So, an important part of what we like to do is to teach principles, because principles can help you through all kinds of situations where sometimes the specifics just don't do you a lot of good. So, here's one of the principal items. Water loss. We lose water through... Respiration, as we breathe in and out, we breathe out water vapor. Uh, perspiration, yes. <laughs> and normal elimination processes. So, um, understanding how we lose water is important. Understanding that we have to replace that is even more important. Okay, let's move ahead. Oops. Uh, our water needs, obviously, drinking. We have to stay hydrated. Hygiene, medical, sanitation, and course some for food preparation um, we forgot we usually try and bring a, a glass of nice dirty water to help motivate you and we let Jonathan drink it no we don't actually um, some of the dangers in water we have biological hazards and these are pretty nasty uh, with protozoas things like giardias and uh, cryptosporidium uh, remember a few years ago at the swimming pools, they were having problems with uh, fecal matter getting in the water and, and it's not killed by the chlorine, and so people were getting sick, so they had to do some extra UV disinfection and things. But those are the protozoas, bacterias. Uh, we've all heard of bacterias, and then viruses. These are in order of size, and the viruses are the smallest. And uh, all of these can cause us some serious problems. Then you also have chemical contamination, such as heavy metals or salts, chemicals, fuels, or other pollutants. So these are some of the things that we need to be uh, wary of as we're thinking about water. So water storage. Water storage is your best solution, at least for the short run. Hopefully uh, your storage can get you through most problems that we may have. We'll talk about both ends of it, though, disinfection as well as storage. Um, we recommend at least at least one to two gallons per person per day for at least two weeks. Now I know that for some families that turns into quite a bit of water, but having that water available to you in a crisis is extremely valuable. So if you can find some places to store water, and of course you can see a, a variety of sizes there, you obviously want to have food grade plastic um, or glass. Uh, obviously you want them to be clean. A variety of sizes is important. Uh, we have big barrels because they hold a lot of water, but they're not very easy to put on my back. I'm no, I'm not terribly buff anymore. But I think even when I was buff, buff now Mark here, he <laughs> might be able to strap a 55-gallon drum, 400 pounds. So that's pretty easy for you. <laughs> anyway, so having a variety of sizes is important. 
all the way down to water bottles. Now, I'm not a huge fan of water bottles. I think uh, for the most part there's better solutions, but for but having a couple of cases of that around that's easy to grab and take somewhere, that's, that's a good thing to have. I am a big fan I, of water bottles. I have a question on that. Yes. So they come with an expiration date. What's the expiration date for um, cases of bottled water? Is that in case it's in your hot car or something? Or? The, yeah, that, uh, some of the bottles are not heavy duty. Right, they're heavy They're very thin and they start degrading. Okay. So that's, that's part of it. But will that actually it's, harm But it's similar, any time a manufacturer makes a product of, of any type, they have to save something from those lots. So all your water bottles have lots on them, and they have to save a couple of those for a certain number of years past the expiration date, so that if something happens with that lot of water, they have the original sources to be able to go back to. So if you're producing millions of bottles of water, how big is your storage aid, or storage place gonna have to be to store your samples if you have a date that goes up five years? Does that make sense? So the date on food as well isn't a really good factor of, of when they're usable. Um, some of the really cheap water bottles, if you leave them in the heat, they start to stink and, and they're, they're just nasty. The better quality ones will last longer. And what you're going to have is you're going to have plastic leaching into that water, right? But if it's a food, food grade plastic, it shouldn't cause you any great harm, right? We yes. have some water bottles that um, have been, you know, sitting in our basement for a year, a year and a half probably. And my brother said, "Don't dump them out. Don't get rid of them." No. Nope. So what could you use them for? Just washing? I would probably drink it actually. Really? It's it. Well, it's a it's water bottle, and you say that it, you know it's been there a really long time. But when we moved, we had water that we had stored since we moved into that house. And of course, when we moved, we had to dump it all out so that, because you don't want to transport it, all those bottles. And so I actually thought, you know what, this is a great time to taste it. And the water actually tasted fine. So it was clean water that went in a clean container, right? Um, and honestly, I can't, um, I just can't remember if we chlorinated it going into the little bottles. I would say I probably didn't. But our water supply was a chlorinated water supply. So it would have been chlorinated from the start. The water was... So now it, it's kind of the whole only drink distilled water thing versus oh. good enough is perfect, right? Well, and, and use your best judgment. I mean, if you've got other water that you can drink and you can use that for washing your hair or other things, then certainly you may want to uh, you may want to do that. But also, you can't store it on concrete. Right? Yeah. You, should. Will, you, can't, you, you shouldn't. You can't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Now, if you have a pet that you don't care about, <laughs> then you can pour it in the pet dish and see what happens. Yes? Sometimes people forget they have a 50 or 100 gallon water heater that water can come out of. Exactly. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. We'll actually, mention that right here in just a minute. Oh, go ahead and talk about the containers, baby. Oh, I think we've, we've gone through a variety of sizes. It's good to have. Uh, yeah, let's move ahead. Um, water sources, and, and we just we just mentioned the water heater, which is down on the list. We've got beverages, we've got bottled water, we've got ice, we've got liquid from your canned fruits and vegetables that you can use. Your water heater tank, that'll be the first thing if we have an earthquake, I'll shut off the inlet to our uh, water heater. And then I've got 80, I've got two 40 gallon water heaters, so there's 80 gallons of water that you've isolated um, and can be used. Um, water remaining in your pipes, your toilet flush tank, obviously not your bowl, but your flush tank could be used for some purposes. Now, now you that's the bowl for the animals you don't like. There we go. But, you know, that, that still weirds me out a little bit to take it out of the toilet tank and use it. But there are things you could use it for, um, including pet water. I mean, pets like to drink out of the toilet, so. <laughs> um, anyway, and one of my favorites is rainwater collection. That's uh, one of the things we're doing on our home right now is getting it set up for rainwater collection. And if you decide you want to do that, there are some laws that govern that. Uh, we can tell you about that. You should. In the state of Utah, tell them the in, in, in Utah, you can have, if you have an underground tank, you can have up to 2,500 gallons 
of storage underground that you could harvest from your roof. Or you can have two 100 gallon barrels above ground. Now obviously you don't want those open so that they're mosquito breeding areas, but, but that's a great source. Do you want that for filter as it's going into? Like it, it will be screened going in and it will be, if we're using it for drinking, it will be filtered and disinfected coming out okay. because there's, there's bird stuff, stuff on the roof and dust and all kinds of things. So I've just seen some that you set it up so it goes through charcoal and it does all this so it's yeah. perfectly drinkable by the time it gets in here. And, and, and you can do those kinds of systems. They're a little more expensive, okay. but you can you can do those where it's all plumb just to filter it and, and make it sure. safe and useful. Okay, do not drink water from swimming pools or hot tubs or water beds. Uh, the chemicals do not boil out and they may be toxic. Uh, if you have a distiller, sometimes that's okay for some of those kinds of water. Uh, but more likely you could use it for hygiene water. So, just a few ideas there. Uh, we talked about the rainwater harvesting a little bit. This little thing right here is at our house. We picked that up at Sam's Club, and it's a 55 gallon container, and it's amazing how fast that will fill. And when you actually do the math on your roof and figure out how much a half inch or a one inch rain will produce, it's pretty amazing. And that's why it's one of my favorites because there's just a lot of potential there. And you notice how we have it up on the cinder blocks? That's because we need to be able to put a bucket underneath it in order to, to get the water out. And that's too close to the ground. So that's why it's up on the side. How much did it cost? You know what, it wasn't much, 70? It was like 70 or $80. The ones they have this year are white and kind of round. Um, so they changed the style. But if you get that online at, at the place that makes them, they were like 120 or something. It was significantly yeah. less at the big box store. Yeah. Hmm. You have a question? Yes. How does it not breed mosquitoes? Um, <laughs> it's screened on top. It's actually got a planter right here, it's so it, it will water plants, but it's got a screen here that keeps the, keeps the mosquitoes from getting in. And, and when it's full, it looks a little bit pregnant. Yes, it kind of bulges out on all sides. So then do you have to filter it after that? No, because, okay, so the rainwater that we harvest, we actually use to feed our chickens or to water the plants that are right there. Um, if we were going to use this for drinking, absolutely, we would make sure that we at least disinfect it, probably disinfect it and filter the water. Yeah. Okay. Now you have a new design. But it's very handy. I think they're very attractive. And it didn't take, what did it take you, John? 20, 30 minutes to set it up? I'm not an engineer. Probably 15 <laughs> minutes. What's that? <laughs> so it took you an hour to figure out how you were going to do it and then 15 minutes to do it. <laughs> Could you? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Could you so true. That Penny, way. do you water your chickens and stuff? Do you guys put a hose up to the spigot or do you bucket it? I bring, we use an automatic chicken water, the metal kind, okay. and I just take it over there and put it under there and fill it up. And then but you can hook a hose up to it to water your garden. As well, could. but your hose, if you hook a hose up to it, you've got gravity, right? So for it to come out of the hose, you're going to have to make sure that that's low elevation. Yeah. Okay. And as, as you probably missed, this, this is one of my favorite water sources. Obviously, it has to be treated, but there's tremendous potential if you're taking the water off your roof. A half inch rain or a one inch rain produces a lot of water. So you can so only have four of those in your house? You can, only, you can have two 100 gallon above ground or one 2,500 gallon underground. That and that's where we're going. Is the, what's, what's the and, and there is a good reason for it. I, I work in water and water rights, and the system of water rights that we work under is a system of uh, prior appropriation. And so people, that water that falls on the ground, the state engineer makes the argument that water goes to, to keep somebody's water right hold. So they found a, a place in the middle where, okay, for, for people, for a homeowner, they can do this much, and yeah, it will impact a little bit somebody else's water supply, but it will be minimal. And there aren't very many of these systems around, uh, because most people look at it from a dollar and cents, and when they figure out how much it's going to cost to put in a, a system maybe like this one, or the underground system, 
you know, it, it probably costs two to three thousand dollars, and they say, well, forget it. I, I, my water's so cheap that I'm not gonna, not gonna do that. But us preppers think very differently. It's not about dollars. It's about having what you need when you need it. Right. So think about your nearest water source to your home. Do you have a lake or a creek, or where is your nearest water source that you would have to haul water from? The really nice thing about having this type of a system, yeah, you're ri limited by your rainfall, but it's water that you can continually get and you don't have to go and carry it because eight, it's eight pounds for a gallon of water. That becomes very heavy to haul that any, any distance at all. Okay. Any other quick questions? Well, there's our cup of dirty water. Uh, we're going to talk about steps for water purification. So as we talked, uh, our, first, our first line of defense is having water stored because we know the quality of that water and we know that it's there and it's easy, easily had. Uh, if we don't have that water or if we run out of that water, then we need to find water and purify it. So uh, in order to do that, we follow these steps, clarifying, disinfecting, and filtering. And so Kylene's going to jump in and talk about those first couple. Okay. So, go ahead and go to the next slide for me. So, it's really important to clarify the water. So, if you've gone to Utah Lake and you've got this nice bucket of water, chances are you're going to have some floaties. It's not going to be crystal clear and beautiful. And when we go to disinfect water, where we kill the bugs that are in the water, um, they can hide in little pieces and avoid being deactivated. So, you want to make sure that you clarify that water first. Now, it would be really nice. This is a... Um, a nice bag filter we keep it in here so that it doesn't get contaminated but this is a filter that you can just dump your water in and it will clarify it um, but any of these kinds of things can actually clarify water you know a bandana this is actually a paint bag that is used to strain paint any type of cloth coffee filters paper towels anything that's going to get all the pieces out so do we, everybody understand what it means to clarify the water? Get all the pieces out. Now, if you don't have anything like that, you can just allow that bucket to settle, and you're going to scrape off all of the floaties on the top, and then dump it into, slowly, dump it into a clean vessel, avoiding anything that's settled on the bottom. Does that make sense? Okay, but that is the first step, and it's a really important step, because if you do all the other steps, but you didn't do this one, you might fail. Okay? Okay, so we'll have to go to the next one. Okay, so this was our little filter bag. It's a one micron filter bag, and we'll talk. Oh, we didn't talk about sizes. Go back. Go back, because this is really important. Um, okay, so you've got your protozoas, right? They are between 1 and 15 microns. So this is a one micron bag. This could actually filter out most of your protozoas. And that's important to know because um, chlorine will not, and iodine, will not kill some of the protozoas because they have a really thick outer um, shell that protects them. And so, but they're really easy to filter out because even this kind of, not this, these don't, but this kind of a filter will actually filter those out. Okay, and then you have bacteria, which are smaller, but still a decent size. And then you've got viruses that are so small, most filters won't filter them out. So look at, um, the bacteria is 0.2 to 5 microns, and then we've got viruses that are 0.02, so they're so much smaller. Okay, go ahead. Go back to where we were. Okay, one more. Okay, so we're going to talk next about disinfecting the water. This is about killing the bugs that are going to make you sick, okay? And so we've, there's lots of ways to do it, but we've selected some of the most popular. Boiling, pasteurizing, distilling, solar disinfection, which is one of my favorite, chlorine bleach, and iodine. So we're going to go through each one of those step by step. Okay. Okay, so boiling, you hear a lot of times a city will place a boil order when their water supplies become contaminated. The reason they do that is because that is the safest way to disinfect your water. So if you have the fuel, you know that you're going to kill all those bugs as long as that water reaches 212 degrees. Now, um, it'll, so depending on your elevation, like where we are, your water will boil before it reaches 212 degrees. So that's why here we boil it just a little bit longer. 
Does that make sense? At sea level, you just have to reach a boil and you know that those bugs are killed. Yeah. Uh, recently in Toledo, there was that algae bloom uh -huh. on Lake Erie. And the boiling actually concentrated. They told them not to boil. It didn't help. Right. They concentrated the uh -huh. pathogen. I don't know anything about that one. Normally, when we're not dealing with algae bloom, that is what you do. I was totally unaware of that one. But norm, for normal conditions, this is the safest. So how did they tell them to deal with that? They were having to bring it in. They were having to truck it in because the water just not. Okay. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's kind of scary. Now, if you had your two-week water supply, would you have to deal with it? No. You'd be okay, right? That's why water storage is so important. I realize it takes up a lot of room, and it's kind of a royal pain, but storing your water keeps your family safe. So even if we had um, some friends who was ta were talking about this guy had a barrel of water that he'd stored in his basement for 50 years. And so, I mean, great opportunity to test, right? So they, they you know, it had all this mossy, moldy, not moldy, but mossy, algae kind of stuff on the top. They skimmed it off, and they ran a bunch of tests on it. And you know what? The water was safe to drink. 50 years. So even if you don't rotate it, store it. It's better. It's better than not having it. Okay. Um, now, the thing to remember, though, is that boiling will not remove chemical contaminants or salt, things like that. So if your water source, if there's a possibility that it's got some chemical contaminants in it, you need to use another process in addition to this um, to or get rid of those. Or find another species. source. Or find another source. So, uh, our altitude, we need to boil longer. How much is longer? 30 seconds, 10 minutes? It, as soon as it reaches 212, it doesn't take it that much longer. So, sorry. Depends on exactly where you are. Okay. Okay, pasteurization. This is the coolest little tool. Okay, we totally are sun oven people, right? We love to use solar cooking methods. This is something called a WAPI. When you disinfect water in a solar cooker, you're never going to see it boil. It's only going to get these little tiny, tiny bubbles. So how do you know when it's disinfected? And this is a tool. I will pass it around. It has some wax in there. And you, you just hang that over the edge of the pan. And when the wax drops to the bottom of the tube, you know that your water is pasteurized. Because in all the research, you look, oh, I don't have it up here. But it, it gives you a range right of time so if you know exactly that your water is 150 degrees you can let it sit for or keep it at that temperature for six minutes and you know that it's been effective but unless you've got a thermometer you're not going to realize that so okay so that's one and it kills all the bad bugs still it doesn't remove the salt or the chemicals okay water distillation this is jonathan's very favorite thing yeah what was that called did you know? this no the wapi the wapi oh the wapi W-A-P-I. So this is Jonathan's very favorite way because he's a water man. That's what he's done all his life. So he knows all the bad stuff that's in our water. And he likes his water to be perfectly pure. When you distill water, what you do is you turn it into steam. And all the bad stuff gets left behind. And you just have pure, clean water. So it will remove like the salt and all that other bad stuff. Except for anything that has a lower boiling point than water. So if you're contaminated with petroleum or oil or alcohol, all of those have a lower boiling point in water, so it will not remove those. Make sense? But it's a really good way to get safe water. It's very, very fuel intensive. So you need a lot of fuel to do that. Okay. Sodas. Okay, this is really one of my very favorite things. All it takes are bottles like this to be able to disinfect your water using the sun. Sodas uses, it's called solar disinfection. It uses the UV rays of the sun to kill all the pathogens and, in the water. UV is ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. Your ultraviolet energy. Ultraviolet energy, that's what it uses. Um, the trick is, it can only be four inches thick. So it, a big gallon jug isn't going to work. Glass canning jars, fine. Anything like this where you can expose it and have it not more than four inches will work. So what you do is you always clarify it first, right? You're running it through some type of a um, cloth or something to get rid of the leaves and the twigs and all that stuff. So then you're going to put it in your bottle about three-quarters of the way, halfway three-quarters of the way, and shake it because you want air in there. 
and then you're going to finish filling that bottle all the rest of the way, and you're just going to set it like this in the sun. Four to six hours later, all the pathogens are deactivated. Is that totally cool or what? So I did not believe this when I first read it. I'm like, you guys are so full of it. But I went and did research, and I read all these research studies, and it really works. And, and so, we talked with the uh, Utah Water Conservancy Central District. Central Utah Water Conservancy yeah. District Water Lab, and they were going through the same process we were saying. Well, I don't know if this works, and they did all their tests. And, yeah, because and they, they have the equipment. They put the pathogens into the water, and and then check them after, and so we were kind of collaborating with them, and yeah, they said, yeah. this is, this is totally for real. Cool. This if is sun stuff. doesn't leach, chemicals make anything of the plastic? Absolutely, it's going to leach something from this plastic into the water. So a but canning jar would be better. A canning jar would be much better, but this is a food grade plastic. So, so what it leaches isn't a bad thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, but not desirable, but yeah, if you leave it out, it'll... Glass is perfect, right? Yeah, glass, glass is, is one of the better. best. If you put it on a dark surface, that's going to add heat to the whole oxygen in it and the UV and then heat, and it's going to work even faster and be more effective. Does that make sense? Seriously, millions of people in third world countries use this every day for their water. And the reason why we want to point out these different things, for some reason, I have a level of comfort with something that I can measure, believe it or not. I'm married to an engineer who measures everything. But it's nice when you can say, oh, for sure this is done, right? Because if you have an overcast day, it's going to need to stay out longer. How do I know exactly how long is longer? Um, it's really easy if you've got a nice, bright, sunny day. Um, but if you don't have anything besides a, a clear bottle, knowledge is power. And you can have clean drinking water that's not going to hurt your family. Yeah. Um, I would like to ask a question. <clears throat> Would it be a good idea, like I have 50 gallon barrels of water storage, would it be a good idea to pump the water from that into these bottles? Well. Because they're already clarified pretty much. You, If you did your if your 50 gallon drum, yes. if it was a clean container, yes. and you put clean water, it's probably chlorinated from your city water supply, right? Uh, yeah, and I put chloride in. Uh, and you put some chlorine in when you set it up? So what could grow in it? What? Could, what would grow in it? You've killed everything. In your initial process, that, well, it's possible you could have a protozoa in there that didn't get killed, but I would really doubt it because our city water supplies, our municipal water supplies are highly monitored. Okay, so, so you, I wouldn't need to do that. No, this is if you had to go to Utah Lake and get your water oh, because okay. you didn't have enough stored. Good that's, idea. yeah, that's Thank why you, you want to store the water. Pour Thank water you. out of your rain barrel you do this with? Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. And if you're an engineer, you can build a nice rack for them so that you can point it exactly at the sun because if the sun's lower in the sky, then you can point it. And, and it automatically rotates too. <laughs> yeah. She gets a little tired of this engineer thing. What kind of bottle is this? I'm not soda sure. Bottle. Oh, it's a soda pop bottle. Just a two. And then this is a juice bottle. The juice bottles are usually made of a very nice, heavy plastic. And so they last for a really long time. So when you leave tonight, it's, it, this is detailed in the book, but also up here we have bookmarks that um, Cedar Fort made for us that actually tell you exactly how to do it. So you can have a little reference in case you want to put it in your emergency kit or something like that. So maybe your kids will remember how to do it or whatever. Okay, go ahead. Oh, we're past this. Okay. Oh, you might want to point out that sodas.ch. Oh, yes. Website. That's where a lot of the if, research If you don't is believe me and you want to see all the studies, they are online. So it's S O D I S dot C H. And it's in several different languages. So if you want to read it in all kinds of different languages, you can do that. Okay. And again, that one's not going to remove the salt or the chemicals or the anything like that. Just kills the bad bugs. Okay, chlorine bleach. I, just before we go on. I want to mention that most municipal water supplies now use that same technology. They use UV, they use lamps, they run the water through tubes that have ultraviolet lamps. But it's the same thing, they're doing the same thing that you're getting from the sun. He's an engineer, he thinks this is all really cool. It is. Okay, so your chlorine bleach. This is one of the things that, that they recommend that you disinfect your water with. 
But one of the things you need to remember is that it can't have anything else in it. So I had gotten the splashless kind because at Walmart it's getting really hard to find just straight Clorox with nothing else in it. And so I contacted the company and said, okay, so is this okay to use? And this is what they told me. The splashless variation of our concentrated regular bleach is not registered as a disinfectant and should not be used as one. The ingredient that thickens the formula is whatever that is. The percentage of our concentrated regular bleach is 8.25. But our splash list is only 3.985. So it means that um, it's got other stuff in it you don't want to be drinking, and it's not even strong enough to disinfect your water. So be really careful. Um, it's only good for about six months. It has a shelf life of six months. And after that time, it gradually just isn't able, doesn't have the power to disinfect. So it's not my first choice just because of all the really tough stuff to make it work right. Um, go ahead. Go Are on. we talking about Clorox? Clorox. Yes. Clorox bleach. Because there's lots of other bleaches. Oh, yeah, okay. So it doesn't have to be just be Clorox. It can be a store brand bleach, but it still has to be just straight bleach with no scents, no thickeners, so that it's splashless, nothing. So it doesn't matter if it's an off-brand or not. So, this, so that outlaws Clorox? It doesn't outlaw it. If you can find the other one and you have it, great. It will, it will still work. Just understand that over time way. it loses its potency. Yeah. And so if you don't know how long it's been on the, you know, in the warehouse and then on the truck and then on the store shelf, it may have already lost some of its potency. And well, then if you have it stored for a while. Water, does it lose it too? What's that? When you dump it in the water, does it take this effect? It loses its potency. Yeah, well, so it, it might not be strong enough to kill all the bad stuff that's in there. Yeah. Does that make sense? But certainly, if it's good, fresh chlorine bleach, just plain chlorine it's bleach, just plain. it will do its job. Mm -hmm. it, it will work. Will that work on swimming pool water? Swimming pool water. Swimming pool water is a whole other story because it doesn't just have chlorine in it. It has a whole bunch of other chemicals. That are, Will that take care of it? No, because you, in the swimming pool, chances are you actually don't have any bad bugs living there, right? We've killed them all. Um, what you have is a whole bunch of chemical contamination. Or you could have cryptosporidium or... Right. Oh, or, okay, you could. Those but, kinds, the protozoans. But this will not make swimming pool water safe to drink. You have to filter that. Okay, and it has to be a really high, high grade good filter um, I would use swimming pool water as a last resort, personally, after it's been filtered. I'd use it for hygiene. Yeah, that's what I personally exactly. would do. I noticed that uh, Clorox has uh, two times concentrated as adequate. If it's more concentrated, that's okay, as long as it doesn't have any of the other stuff in it. It means it'll take a little bit less bleach. Go ahead and go to the next one. There are actually devices that you can use batteries to create your own Clorox from salt your own chlorine from salt. So there are devices like that out there. Um, if you're interested, you can email me and I can, can send you the directions that I have. Okay, go ahead and go to the next one. All right, calcium hypochlorite. This to me is kind of the answer. Now, this is real dangerous, stinky stuff. This is pool shock and it's 68% calcium hypochlorite. Now, this has a 10 year shelf life and what you can do is use a bleach. I use a bleach bottle. You can use anything, but you don't want to drink it. But you can use this to make your own concentrated bleach fresh so that you can use it to disinfect water or if we're having some type of pandemic or something, you can disinfect countertops or whatever you need to using that. So this is a really good substitute for preppers instead of buying your Clorox. What's the price? This is less than five bucks. Oh, and it doesn't. On Amazon. Now, I have a little gift for each of you tonight. Um, this is a little tiny container of calcium hypochlorite. And you can only have it if you promise not to do stupid things. Because this is a dangerous chemical. So don't eat it. Um, keep it out of reach. Keep it out of reach of kids. And, and wives. And smart pets. Okay. Um, this little thing right here will disinfect 1,100 gallons of water. And it has a 10 year shelf life. So that is that pretty impressive for a prepper? Now, um, this 
we keep it in this little tub here with some of the different things that we bring for our presentations, and that stinks really bad. And, and this can seriously cause a lot of damage. And these little bottles that we have in it, you can't smell it at all. My container, when I opened it up tonight, you can't smell it. So this is doing a really good job of um, protecting it. So go ahead. So when you're doing your um, barrels, your barrels for storing water, a quarter of a teaspoon of this is all you need to put in that barrel to make it safe for storage. Yes? Oh, none of them are done. With the storing of the water, what physical location is the best? For like, because we have like five or fifty-five gallon, you know, tubs. Where's the best place to store in the garage? Can I tell a story? Outside. Can yes. I tell a story? She, she can tell okay. Story. Okay. So you know, Jonathan and I. He's perfect. I am good enough. Is perfect. And so. When we first moved into our new house, of course, all of our water barrels were empty, right? And that was highly annoying to me. So one day I went out there and I just filled them all up. Not perfectly, but they're all filled up and they all had their little treatment. And they're out there on pallets outside with a pond liner over them to protect them from the sun. So he knows that this is just not the right way to store things. And so he dumps them out and stores them in my garage. Oh, only three. Only three. <laughs> He dumps them out and stores them in my garage empty the entire winter, so the car can't go in the garage. But the, the precious water barrels were in the garage empty. So, um, <laughs> I, you don't want me to tell the story now, huh? That's but, okay. Okay, but now, now they are perfect because in our basement, he has, because our basement is concrete, of course, he has these um, wood things. What are they that you put down there? Planks? Plastic pallet. Plastic coated wood plank thing. And they are each put on there, um, perfectly in there, perfectly refilled with water through with an RV hose so that and that is kept hooked up when it's not in use so that no contamination could have ever occurred inside those barrels. So now they are perfect. And that is the perfect place to store them. But we would not have died of thirst if they would have just been stored in my yard either. But in right. our situation without a basement or anything with the garage. The garage would be the your next best, best choice. choice. They, they won't freeze in there, assuming you have a normal garage. They're not going to freeze. They're not going to have the ultraviolet rays of the sun degrading the plastic and making it brittle. And so that would be, yeah, if that's... What you have, that would be your best choice, as opposed to outside. So there's have a story too, and ours is out in the trees, behind the playhouse. Is it okay to have them outside? Yeah, if that's if that's where you can have it, especially for additional water storage. Yeah. Yes, you can have it outside, and you know, make sure you don't fill it too don't full. Fill it too carefully. But but the thing is, <laughs> during the winter, if you have your crisis during the winter, it could be frozen, and so you need to make sure that you've got a backup inside, right, to get you through a while until you can get that barrel unfrozen. I I don't want to sell something. Yeah, as long as you leave some head space on there. And and we, we put the pond liner on ours just to keep the sun from, so if there's a way you can keep it out of the sun. Oh, it's not in the it, sun, it's in the trees. Okay, so that's, it's, it's shaded. <laughs> it's shaded all so the that's, time. Yeah, that's, so there is a perfect way to do everything. But if you wait for that perfect thing to happen, <laughs> then nothing might get done. So do the best you can with what you have. Exactly. So, okay, now we're back to this stuff. Great stuff. But, um, so I, I recommend that everybody has it, but you have to be very, very careful where you store it. Um, go ahead and go to the next one. Oh, this just tells you how to make the stock solution. It's in the book. And on this bookmark, it actually tells you how to make that stock solution. Um, we got this information, it's the U.S. military standard, and so that is where you're taking this from. Depending on where you look, people are going to tell you to use different amounts, but we felt like the U.S. military was probably one of the best ones. One of the things that they said in there is if you do not have an exact measuring device, it's better to put too much in than too little. Okay? So that's why here, on here, you've got, you know, one tablespoon or 2.7 teaspoons. If you can't measure perfectly 2.7 teaspoons, up it. Put it in three. Okay? Put it in. Yeah. 
Yeah, put in three, put in a tablespoon. Um, so when you're using the chlorine bleach, you have to have some contact time. So you're going to put the chlorine in, and it needs to set for 30 minutes. And then when you smell it, you should smell chlorine. If you don't, you need to retreat it and wait 15 more minutes. The amount of chlorine depends on how many bugs are in your water because chlorine is actually used up when it kills those bugs. And that's why if that smell's not there, it's killed all of, it's killed the bugs, but used up all the chlorine. So did they all die? Or, you know, do you still have some bugs in there and you ran out of chlorine soldiers? Okay, go to the next one. Okay, I'm so sorry you can't see this very well. This is an aqua rain filter. It's made out of stainless steel. We had some friends who put it in a tote similar to this. They put the aqua rain filter in, a, in the box with the wrapping still on it. They put this inside a Metamucil bottle and they put a container of Polar Pure, which is iodine crystals, in there. And two years later, he went to check his preps and they did three of these exactly alike because they have kids and they wanted these water kits to be able to go. Um, and that is what happened to the aqua rain filter. It totally corroded. This stuff is really powerful. So you've got to be very careful what you store it near. I'm, I'm really trying to drive that point home. Did I drive it home? Do we understand? It's a valuable tool and this is really cool because you know you can't smell it in in these. So be very, very careful. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Hi Molly. Um. Whatever happened to iodine? Iodine used to be the big thing that they would put in water. Well, and we're going to talk about that. In fact, is that next? Iodine. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, iodine, it still has issues with the protozoas, just like chlorine does. Um, and you have to be really careful because anybody who has thyroid issues, which seem to be on the rise, or if you're pregnant, a bunch of different things like that, you shouldn't use it. And they don't recommend that you use it more than a few weeks. So one of the things with it, so this potable agua, the shelf life on it, I think is two years, something like that. So if you're buying it for emergency preparedness, you're having to replace this every two years. So it's really not a good option. It's a great option for camping or something like that, but really not for this. Okay, go to the next one. Now this is Polar Pure, and it has the crystals in it. And so it has an indefinite shelf life. It's good forever. And so you, use that for your iodine and that's a really good solution except for now because it's an ingredient in meth it's really hard to find it so you're you're not just you're just not going to find much iodine there's so many other good things to use i'm not sure that i worry about it too much and as it says here that's the dose of those crystals in there is a lethal dose so you have to keep that away from children this is a lethal dose too. absolutely don't absolutely <laughs> just, just making the point that Be careful. all of these have some, some hazards Yeah, associated. they are, because they're intended to kill, right? We want them to kill the bugs. They're biological bugs. So let's talk just a little bit about filtration. Filtration is an, an important part of the processes. Um, these, most good filters will, will take care of protozoas and bacteria, and some of them will even get most of the viruses. But I don't see very many filters out there that can claim in fact, I don't know that I've seen any filters that can claim that they get all the viruses. But that's okay, because we can treat. We can treat using chlorine, and that will kill the viruses. We can use the filters to improve the taste and the smell, and to take care of the protozoas and bacteria. And so, filtration is a, an important thing for us to understand. So, um, just a little bit about uh, filtration, there's, and Mom, Sorry, why don't you explain? Okay. okay, so there's something called a micron rating, and that is the size of the holes, of the pores that the water goes through, okay? There's two kinds. There's an absolute, which means the absolute is the maximum size, so the biggest hole. So some of these are ceramic filters, and you're going to have big holes and little holes, and so that's the, the absolute is the biggest size hole there is. Okay? Now the nominal is the average size. So you could have one that is 0.02 and that's just the average size, which means there are some holes that are bigger that things could slip through. Some are smaller, but some are bigger. And so that's kind of really important when you're looking at filter sizes because 
these, you know, these bugs have a physical size, and if the hole is small, they can't pass through it. Okay, so most of this, this stuff on here, it just kind of shows you how big, like the protozoas are 1 to 15 microns. So if you have a 0.1 micron filter, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remove a lot of stuff. All of these are going to remove a lot of the protozoas. But you move over here to the viruses, and if you have a 0.1 micron, um, so 0.1 micron, it's not effective at all against viruses. So, so it's, under, it's important to understand what your filter is rated for. That's the only reason why we're telling you this is because your filter is rated for something and you want to make sure that if you're intending it to, to remove viruses, you've got to have the right filter to do that. Okay, uh, filter life quality of water used uh, will affect the life of the filter. And that only makes sense. I mean, if you've got crud and stuff in that water, it's going to shorten the life of that filter. It's going to plug it up. And a lot of these filters can be cleaned. They, a lot of them come with a cleaning kit so that you can actually take it out, clean it, and put it back in. But um, the cleaner the water, the better off you are. That's as simple as it can get. Just make sure your water is very clean and your filter should last a long time. Um, okay, there, there's plans online for homemade filters. Um, or it's or, knowledge is power, right? Yep. If you know, okay, you're caught somewhere, you, you don't have anything else to do with this water. If you know that you run, can run it through the different um, materials and have clean water, that's power. It's what there, it says one inch layer of charcoal. That is actually um, activated charcoal. Activated charcoal. It's yeah. not like the charcoal for your barbecue. Not for kids. Okay. Okay. This is one that we do like. It's the Sawyer filter, and there's two, two versions of that. But I think ours that we got was $50, and it is rated for a million gallons. It uses a medical technology. And it is pretty amazing. It's very lightweight. It fits in a little box about like this, and it's very light. Um, so we just got done saying we don't have, we don't want to recommend any particular brand, but this is one that we really do like because it's very portable. It's very functional. It's very adaptable to different and, situations. And it's affordable, okay. and that's a big thing. And where did you, was that online? Amazon, and it's about $50. There's a few different versions. There's two. There's the 0.1, um, and there's a 0 0.02, which will filter out viruses to that 99.9997. And when I called the manufacturer and talked to him, he said that in the United States, the regular 0.1 will filter out anything that we have here. If you are going to Africa, they recommend that you do the, the other one because they have different... Um, viruses and things than we do. Different things to worry about. Okay. And this one can actually be adapted directly to your faucet. So if you still have water coming, but the water is contaminated, you can actually filter it directly through your faucet. Yeah. Or you can you can scoop it into a bag and squeeze it through the filter. Or you can so make it into a bucket filter. Right. It, the kit is very versatile. It's, it's pretty amazing. Okay. Um, I want you to talk about the black barbie. <laughs> Kylie did the research on these filters. She did a massive amount of research on all these filters. That's why she's the, okay. the authority so on these. So the Black Berkey is actually another very, very high quality filter. Um, it's about $107 a filter. And we're not talking about the, the container. We're talking about the actual filter. But it, it removes most contaminants and most of the viruses too. Um, it will remove red food coloring from the water. So it is a good filter, it is a very pricey filter, but um, it, it absolutely is, is one of the better filters out there. Now, do you have to have one of these really, really good filters? You don't, right? But what do you really need? You know, it's, it's kind of like in life. We all have different budgets, right? Okay, what's your prepping budget? Can you afford the Cadillac? To me, this is kind of Cadillac. If I have the ability to kill the pathogens that are in the water, and then just a decent filter to run it through, I'm probably okay. Would I much rather drink water that has been run through something, a Sawyer filter or this? Yeah, probably. My personal preference. But am I always going to be able to do that? No. Truly, what we promote in, in all of our education is you don't have to have these high dollar things. There are, and that's been one of our specialties, I guess I would say, 
We find low cost solutions to get things done. So you could use that in a bucket. You could, there's also other little dome filters that you can buy very inexpensively that you could create. The, there are plans out there, put those in a five gallon bucket and you can do largely the same thing. These do a little better job, but you can make your water safe and pure uh, using these other, other lower cost. There's, there's one of those dome ceramic filters that we were just talking about. Uh, and this one is $28. So for 28 bucks you could, and a couple of buckets, you could make a, a decent filter that will do very much the same thing, especially if you're dealing with a good quality water, that you just need to make sure it's, it's safe enough to drink. But look at this, it's a 0.2 micron, which means all the viruses are going right through. So, now it'll, it'll get rid of your protozoa and some of the bacteria, right? A lot of bacteria. But you're going to need to treat your water first with chlorine or something like that to kill those viruses before putting it through a filter like this. Um, please, hey, if you get really excited about this, one pound bag, 10,000 gallons of water. Do not buy a 50 pound bucket of this. It's a dangerous chemical to have around. Hey, don't do it. You only need a little bit. Tell. So how would you say to store it? You just keep it in that plastic bag? Okay, and this is actually something that, okay, Mr. Perfect and this is good enough is perfect. We've been going back and forth. He didn't want me to give these out because he's afraid you're going to do something bad with them. And, and so I did I'm a lot sorry, of research. I should trust you all. You told me you wanted me to kill your cat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we like those cats. Um, okay, so I have a chemical engineer friend, Jay Wimpy. And he gave me a list of all the plastics that it does not react with. And this is one of the plastics it does not react with. And it's airtight and light tight. And like I said, I, can't, I cannot smell it. So um, I think this is a really good way to store it because it's smaller amounts. Um, and I would be very personally, I don't know about you, I would be okay putting this in my 72 hour kit. I still don't think I'd put it inside of a metal mess kit or something because it really does, it is very highly corrosive. But um, I, this is not a bad way, so maybe some of your old medicine bottles, depending on, well, I don't know what quality your pharmacy uses. You know, these are airtight and light tight. So. Okay, um, this is just another variety of filter, the Seychelle. I don't know if we have one out here. This is available through the church, through the distribution center. It, it is what they recommend missionaries. Go ahead. Except that's not the one I actually have up here. This is actually the radiological filter. Sorry, I changed the slides on him. Um, this one isn't rated to remove the bacteria or anything. This one is only rated for a radiological emergency. And the reason I put it up here is because I want you, it's two microns absolute. There's no point in front of anything. So this one is not going to get rid of any of your biological stuff, but it's gonna get rid of heavy metals and lead and mercury. So my only point in this is know your filter. If this is what you want it to do, this is the kind of filter you need to have. The one that John was trying to tell you about is actually this one. Right. And this is the one that is uh, available online at a really good price, actually. So, so, try sucking water out of it. You have it. It's How much do those cost? I want to say they're like twenty or twenty dollars. They, they, they actually have. Okay, nice. But it's not the. It's not. It's not like the best of the best, right? Um, the but Sawyer filter. The soy, They have a Sawyer bottle that does a better job, that has a higher flow rate. So we're not. And we're not really recommending any filter to you. I want you to understand that we're not here to sell filters. We're just here to say these are some of the things that we've observed. So the Sawyer does have a bottle that I think is really cool. I haven't been able to afford to buy it. I have lots of toys, and I can't justify another filter toy. They have straws that you can use and put directly in the lake or the pond or whatever. I got those too. My problem with that is how close is my face to that contaminated water that I don't want to be drinking, right? So survival, yeah, maybe, best choice, mm, I don't know. Sounds like we have two choices, either sheltering at home or leaving right. and taking it in our bag or something like that. Right. That's almost what we've worked down to. Right. And so you need to be prepared for both, right? 
while I think the Berkey is totally cool and if I'm at home and that's where I'm at, that's, you know, I can use that. But the Sawyer is about this big with all of its components, super lightweight. It would fit in my 72 hour kit and give me a whole bunch of different options. So, you know, it's, what's your favorite and what you want to use? We just want to make sure you know the limitations like this one. If, if you're thinking that it's going to do the biological stuff, it's not. You're going to get really sick if your water's contaminated that way. But it does remove all of the nuclear radiation kind of stuff that could be an issue too. Um, and these are just some of the other filters. Uh, MSR is a good brand. Um, they have some good filters. This is just another variety, a hand pump filter. And uh, most of these are cleanable. Uh, you can use them for a while. And, and as always, make sure your water is clean before you pump it through here. If you've got crud and stuff that's getting clogging up that filter, um, it's just not going to work as well. So, so look at this one, 0.2 micron. It's not going to touch your viruses. You have to use something first. You have to treat with chlorine or iodine or something to kill those. But it removes chemicals such as iodine, pesticides, and chlorine. So does that make sense? So if this is the filter you choose, just make sure you chlorinate it or something first. And then that filter will last for 528 gallons. That's really important to know how much your filter is going to. Um, here's another brand, Patadine, a good brand. Also, um, cartridge life is 13,000 gallons. This one has silver <coughs> impregnated into the ceramic element. Silver is a sterilizing agent, so that assists with that process of uh, making sure that water's clean. Uh, the aqua rain, we refer to that's the one that our neighbors had, or our friends that had uh, three of those. This is what it is. It's a gravity filter, stainless steel. Um, and those are the, the filters, those four filters. Um, it's a good option. I think we've driven home the point that uh, safe drinking water is really, really important. There's just no substitute. So we want people to store as much clean water as you, as you reasonably can. And then know where you're going to get additional water if that runs out or if you don't have that water. Uh, do you know how you're going to transport it? Do you have a wagon, a wheelbarrow? Because uh, as Kelly mentioned, it's heavy stuff. And if you're carrying two gallons for two miles, that's going to get old in a hurry. So know where you're going to get it, how you will transport it, and then know how you're going to make it safe to drink. And our challenge that we always provide is do something now. Sometimes we go to these classes, we get motivated, and then we end up going home and life takes over and if we don't do something, we lose that momentum. So we challenge you to, to be realistic, set some goals, be realistic. Uh, you don't have to have high dollar stuff. Do what you can do reasonably, but make some, make some progress on it. And then we'd like, there's our email addresses if you want to, uh, if you have questions or you want to write to us. Tell us your success stories. We love success stories and we love failure stories too. I like failure stories. Because we all have those failure stories as we, as we make progress. There's a learning curve that we have to go through. We make some mistakes. Hopefully we make those mistakes now when the consequences aren't severe. And uh, just keep making progress. Any questions? Yes? Just like a comment, I live in a condo. Uh -huh. Don't have a lot of room for water storage. Those blue five-gallon cans that you showed in the beginning, uh -huh. if you did four of those and four on top and then put a board and a little drape over for a, a stand nice or something table. like that, put a lamp on it, you've got yourself 40 gallons of water right there. That's right. You get to be really creative. <laughs> and there are all kinds of ways to be creative. If you want to prep, if you want to be ready, you can be ready. You just have to be creative, no matter yeah. what your circumstances are. Um, our website, we've got a couple of websites. Theprovidentprepper.org is actually our blog, and so we have lots of information that's continually being put on there. Um, but there's all the social media. If you want to follow us or connect with us or ask us questions, we, we would love, we would love to hear back from you.
So what other questions do we have? 